Hey, profs. Welcome on in. My name's Rob Lightfoot, proud two-time alum the Rick Edelman College of Communication, class of 2000-2001. This is Beyond the Brown and Gold. I'm Jessica Kennedy. I'm the co-host here, also a two-time proud Rowan alum, class of 2008 from the Rick Edelman College of Communication and Creative Arts, and 2015 from the College of Education. Thanks so much for joining us today. Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM presents Beyond the Brown and Gold, a show that highlights the lives and memories of Glassboro State and Rowan University alumni. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Lightfoot and Jessica Kennedy. On today's show, we have one of our very own, not only an alum, but a professor here at Rowan, Bob, Bob Gartner. It's like double bubble. He is a 2006 history and secondary education alum. He also graduated in 2011 with a Master of Arts in Higher Education Instruction and Administration. And he do, and he works on the uh, the Battleship New Jersey, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that started way back in his internship days when he was a student here. Yeah, he is a current history adjunct professor here. Uh, lots of fun things that we talked to Bob about on today's show. Take a listen. We're going back in time because Bob's. All about the history. I was a history major here, graduated in 2006, and now I'm also an adjunct in the history department this semester, so it's always good getting back. And it's always interesting to see how things have changed around campus. Um, like I said before we were talking, my father is a graduate class of 78. My aunt and uncle graduated from here, so when I was coming to campus in the fall, though, too, my dad goes, oh, this building was here when I was here. This wasn't. And at the time, Bossert Hall still stood. Oh, my gosh. And Bossert Hall was the science building, and my father was a bio major, so he knew the building pretty well. And so by 2004, when the science building had opened, Bossert was still there. I had literature classes in Bossert, ironically, right? And so it was there, and then the following semester, they took it down. So now if you haven't been here before, you didn't have anybody know, you would not know there was something on the green grass in front of the science building and that was the previous science building and for those who recall from i guess my time and your time boss Art hall needed to be taken down back then like yeah. it was the building was <laughs> shot it was like it was shot yeah. yeah but they were still obviously needing it for space and such yeah I, and i remember too there was a biology professor i think it was dr Prado. i would walk through and i had a, a hand cooler like that because i was a commuter i would bring my lunch in it and he said what organ do you have today because i'm walking through the science building with a cooler so he thought it was like oh, transporting yeah, yeah. an organ, an organ. <laughs> he'd always say uh, what organ do you have today and so i would always change it on him you know, i never thought just... about carrying an organ are there people carrying organs around here i hadn't even yeah, considered no, that I, as a thing i don't know well, I guess they are. I, I think he thought it was funny, and I just went with it, so it kinda, I kept it going. Yeah. But now with the medical school, who knows? There's got to be lots of organs around here. <laughs> but more than I probably want to think about. I'm harvesting here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Where'd you grow up? How'd you get here? I, I graduated at Audubon High School, okay. class of 2002. And when I was looking for colleges to apply to, I applied here, York College of Pennsylvania, and a college in New Jersey. And so ultimately, uh, it came down to I decided to come here and uh, – I commuted, which was save money, right? I was able to do my undergrad and graduate school here, no loans, which was great. But the awesome thing about coming here was I think I got into the best history department in the area. And talking to people from other colleges and so forth, yeah, they have good professors, but I think our department as a whole was the best department. We had a lot of people from all over, great experts on a lot of different areas of history. And it was just amazing to have them in class. I mean, I had a... Bill Carrigan, Jim Heinzen, Scott Morshauser, and uh, Dr. Morshauser just retired recently. Mm -hmm. But the man was a, a wealth of knowledge about ancient history, which was an amazing thing, something you didn't wouldn't normally have. Uh, Dr. Blake I had for middle, modern Middle East. So I, I had a lot of different professors, and one of the things that was great about it is you learn from them, and I still talk to them. It you know, wasn't just like, I hey, out the door you got I still talk to them, uh, you know, whether I see them in the office or just through email or at events. And one of my friends said this, and I, I didn't think about it really until the time, said, but if you go to an alumni event for the history department, there's gonna be a lot of people. And a lot of us who were also history teachers, like we have that allegiance to the history department. And it's very true, we always go all the time. We see the same people and the same professors, and it's just a great bunch of people. And I don't think I would've gotten that experience anywhere else. Well, did you always love history, like in high school? and? Yeah, I did. Um, I actually took two history classes one year because 
they forgot to give me one. So I said, can I take them both now? He said, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. So I took them both at the same time. Apparently that was uh, unheard of and shouldn't have been done, but I needed to do it. So I was His- able to do that. History is so cool. I don't think I had the proper appreciation for it when I was learning yeah, it, like here. in like uh, you know elementary, middle, and high school. But now I'm like I should have paid more attention in history classes because yeah. my dad would always say those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it, and that was like his <laughs> his saying all the time. But I don't. I, I mean, I think now history is so incredible, but it it is a, a, a I think a difficult subject to get you know students well, if you interested. See in. the path if you can see where you're getting to, mm-hmm. it makes it more relevant. Because a lot of people are like, well, I don't need to know this. Like, Alexander the Great died of a fever, so what? Um, but if you can find a way to make it, make like a link, I think people will see it more relevantly. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things that we try and do. And I think our department's great for it. So what's one of the links maybe that you've created? Well, for my students, when I taught high school, one of the things I would do is take US1 and US2 and kind of make it look like a building block. Okay, this happens, so this could happen, and this to this, and so on. And so, when I taught, I taught in Runnymede, New Jersey, and that was named after the town of Runnymede in England, where the Magna Carta was signed. Okay, so it kind oh, of give them a little, bit little of, lesson here. Give them a little mm-hmm. bit of a like reference to themselves. But one thing I do with my students now is I have them look at Rowan and find old pictures, like fifty years or before, and look at the modern day spot where it is. What was there? How's it changed? Why is this here now? Or did it change? If it did change, how? Like if the building got a facelift or something. Like, and a lot of them don't realize what's here until they go diving for it. And that's one of the things that they need to look for. That sounds like a great project. If you could send your results to the Office of Alumni Engagement, <laughs> that would be great. Because that's you great want easy content. research? Yeah. I mean, if, hey, if your class is already doing it, pass it along. <laughs> Come on. I know how to use my campus resources. Now, what made you leave? Uh, what made you, you bounce from the high school area? Uh, basically, I figured, you know, I've done uh, all I could well, with the high school. And I always wanted to teach college. I was hoping to go on for a doctorate, but that just wasn't in the cards. Not yet. Not yet, not yet. We'll see. We'll see how long time goes. I figured I wanted to be able to give it a shot. And then on top of that, too, now with te- uh, teaching to college, I can be more involved in my daughter's stuff, too. And my daughter's started ice skating, so she's always busy. And so I'll be able to see her to do it. But I also, just the ability to come in and meet people from all over, not just the same three towns every year. You know, Now I'm getting to meet people from all over the state, in some cases other states, and it's just to see how things are different, how we can combine them, where they're coming from, and then put them out in the world as a Rowan graduate, and so hopefully have a hand in doing something good. Is there a history time period that's of most interest to you? I'm very much uh, Antebellum South and the Civil War. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy that, um, but I like all of it. I mean, I work on the Battleship New Jersey part time, so I like doing that too. Military history is a lot of fun. Uh, tracing my family's history is fun too. I like doing that. Uh, trying to anyway. Sometimes you get a roadblock here or there, and you got to figure it out. But it's fun to do. You get to learn some things. So tell me how you are tracing family history because I did the was it I don't I think it was ancestry, and that when I, you're spitting a cup or something. Yeah, yeah. I spent okay. like a tube, and I sent it out, and I got like all my you know cultural you know it, you know information back, but. A lot of people like dig deep into that kind of stuff and they like find family members they didn't know existed. I just was like, oh, I'm this. I didn't realize Um, that. But no, I don't do that just for the sheer fact that by the time it gets back to you Mm -hmm. and it's not a quote legit laboratory experiment. What if there's a problem with the sample or whatever? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I use um, census records like off ancestry and I use like what my parents remember, what they told me or what their parents told them. And that's kind of like my jumping block and so for example my mom worked for cooper for a long time and uh when she retired they gave her this big book for cooper nurse talking about the cooper nurses in world war ii went to north africa well, my mm. mom's aunt was one of them and she her pictures in that book oh, cool. and so like the stories she heard and then we all right we put it together now i know her regiment this is where i can figure out where she was look at old newspapers and things if I can find like a little bit of something from my family to go off of, then I can dive off of it. Because a lot of times people go, oh, I just used the 23 Me, Okay, maybe, but it's not 100% guaranteed that all of that is foolproof. 
So dig into the old papers, dig into the census records, stuff that's still there, and you learn a lot. And sometimes you get some surprises too. That's what I mean. That's a little scary about trying those things out. Well, I mean, all I did was, I mean, I don't, I didn't even think about using it to find people, but I think you can say whether like you want it. Did you find anything that you wanted to? Did you find anything you didn't want to find out? Um, I mean, I, I mean, there's not, nothing that I'd be like, oh, I'm from this area. That's awful. I mean, I, I found some things that I, like, I found out more like the regions of like Italy for my like Italian heritage. I found out that was pretty interesting, which my parents were like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I didn't find out anything strange, but I know people sometimes will find like half sisters or like they connect. It's just kind of. She's from this magical land called Central Jersey. I don't know if you've ever heard of this place. It doesn't. No. It is an actual yeah, exist, New Jersey. Actually. Agreed. Didn't they have like some sort of thing that there is? Okay. In regards to your question about finding things out you didn't know, um, I didn't realize just how many of my grandmother's family members were in the same spot of town. Like I knew that she had a cousin and his cousin's granddaughter has the exact same birthday as my sister, right? So we knew that there were a relation, but I didn't know how many of them there were. Like there was like 30 oh, of wow. the same family last name in the same little spot of town. I had no idea about that hmm. before. I think I had a little. You just check the census record, you find that out. Um, I found out my grandmother's uncle uh, went down onto USS Juno with the Sullivan brothers at the Battle of the Coral Sea. I had never known that. Uh, he went down to the Battle of Coral Sea, and his name's on the wall of the missing in Manila, Philippines, at the uh, American Cemetery. It was something we didn't know. We heard about it, and then we looked it up, and yeah. So what was the jumping off point, though, for you for this whole history piece? Like, what what got you initially that initial taste of, I want to do this, I want to pursue this? Uh, you know, my, my dad took me to uh, Gettysburg when I was in high school, and I went to I went to the Valley Fords, and he always watched different documentaries. He saw Ken Burns's Civil War. Yeah. And so I just kind of jumped on to it, and the, the idea of a story, and that story has so many different uh, minutia to it, and he can build off of it. I think if you look at it more as a story than sort of a, a some sort of a, a, a dutiful thing you have to read all the time, it makes more sense. And there's always like the little nuances of things you didn't think about, and you're like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. I uh, know uh, a lot of the things with Civil War now is getting to that minutia, like the environmental history of the Civil War or or the weather of a battle, like from all these different people's accounts, they're really digging into it. Because if you did it right, you could figure out that there's one book published per day since the war ended. Mm-hmm. The war ended April 9th, 1865. Imagine that, a, a book a day. Like That's how much information's out there on the Civil War. It's voluminous. So now people are trying to figure out what's the new thing to say. And it's just interesting to see what people are coming up with. I would love if every piece of history was turned into a musical. <laughs> that's... I literally love Hamilton, but I'm I wouldn't consider myself a history lover, admittedly. Um I, I you know, I appreciate it now as I'm older, but definitely didn't. And then when I like watch Hamilton, I'm like if they could just make you feel things mm-hmm. for all of these like people in history, like they could in a musical, you would be like, Oh wow, these you it gives you kind of a sense of like, Oh, these are real people and these are just not names and books that mm-hmm. you like you said you have to read. I just feel like the value of being able to teach people in a way that they can accept that information is probably a real challenge with that subject, I would think. It can be, because sometimes you also have people who have their own uh, pre-inclinations about certain individuals uh, in history, and so you have to have them, okay, yeah, you can look at the person that way, but also let's look at their contributions. I'm not saying you can't think of the person the way you want to, but sometimes those pre-inclinations make it a little bit different to try and get somebody to understand. Well, you have a daughter, so is that why? You... Yes. Yes. How old is your daughter? I, I, my daughter is seven. Okay, so she was and like. And so all the Disney movies, like Moana was her thing when she was two. Yeah. Uh, and so we're taking her to Hawaii for the first time this Christmas. Oh, girl. Okay. So, you know, I, my wife and I. Is that I how you guys go to Hawaii? Should I just start talking about how much I love Moana in my house? <laughs> Somebody take me to Hawaii? I'm I talking like to that. Brian next week. I'll talk him right out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she'll enjoy it. Um, and it was also neat because my grandfather was at Pearl Harbor in World War II. After the attack, he wasn't there during the. But we also found out, going back to family history, my wife's grandfather and my grandfather were at the same spot, the same time in the Navy, but they didn't know each other. Get out of here. Oh, that's now, see, funny. that's cool. That's yeah. a good part of history right there. Yeah. So, how did you get the gig with Battleship New Jersey? 
I literally applied. Um, it wasn't like so I knew somebody. What happened was when I was an undergrad, I helped Bill Kerrigan with the internship fair here. And we used to have a class called uh, Public History, and people would get an internship. And, and at the time, the guy at the Battleship in New Jersey's name was Dan Farrell, and I had talked to him. I said, you know, do you have anything? He said, well, you can come help. It's volunteer basis only. And I said, okay, I'll see what I can do. But at the time when I was ready to do it, I graduated, I was coaching track and field at the high school. And if anybody knows track and field, it's a long season. From winter, spring, and then cross country, you have no time. So by the time I stopped coaching him, we, because of, we had our daughter, uh, I said, you know what, let me try again. And they, they got me on board. So I've been there for a couple of years now. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. Tell us a little bit about it because I've never been. Yeah, I've never been either. Okay, so basically the New Jersey is an Iowa-class battleship, and there was four of them ever made, and they're all museums. Of course, everybody likes to go to the Missouri because it's in Pearl Harbor, but we have more battle stars and commendations, so. Come see us in Camden. <laughs> but we also do uh, an encampment program where people sp- spend the night uh, on the ship. They do, e- yeah, they do evening colors. They have more evening chow. They have a tour. Uh, they usually do a saluting gun shoot, and then they sleep over. Morning, get up. Morning colors. Morning chow, and then they can explore the rest of the ship they haven't seen. Assuming chow means they're eating food. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so what happens Check. is a lot of times it's Boy Scout groups, church groups. But you can have alumni like a, groups, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could do an idea. alumni group. Or you could do uh, sometimes people do family groups, like a family of like fifteen or what have you. So it's a really great program. It's one of a bunch of awards. We're always busy with it. Uh, people have had their weddings on board. Um, last weekend we just did WMGK's Beer Fest. Wow. Uh, we have cigars on the river coming up at the end of the month. That's so we have fun. a lot of different events. It's a great venue. If you and we're open for people who want to have parties and stuff on board too. So if you're looking for a great place to have a party, but also have a fun time looking at history in the past, best place to go. And then you guys do as part of this, you guys do any educational piece, or this is just well, you can do a tour as part of uh, you can do a tour as part of whatever your event is. But I also. I do the tours, uh, and I also do events. So I could, I'm on both sides of it. Mm. And so a lot of times tours will be different tour groups. Like we've had ROTC groups. We've had school groups. We've had summer camp groups. Like in the summertime, they'll come aboard, and we'll do that. We've had ship reunions. Like people have their reunion aboard in New Jersey with their shipmates. It's, it's you know, get a lot of different groups of people to meet. I mean, the first tour I ever did was to a group of Danish naval architects. Oh, you too? No, <laughs> I was like, what? You know, first tour, I'm giving it to naval architects. I'm like, there's going to be a question to ask. Yeah, no yeah, idea. you're not going to you know because I mean? they're going to ask all yeah, the, the, so, the, the stuff. No, it's, it's, it's great. It's and a, did you already have a history? Of, I had a, I had a history degree at the time I was teaching, yeah. But did you know, like, specifics about the battleship? Or not they, as they much as um, I did. When they train you to gotcha. do it. I knew uh, a decent amount yeah. from what, what I know of the Navy, but also what my grandfather mentioned in World War II, but... You know, I learned more of the in-depth, like all the intricacies of how the ship operates and things like that. What's an interesting fact that folks might not know about the, the battleship? Uh, let's see. Well, uh, she actually was in a storm called uh, Typhoon Cobra, and it, the storm had 90-foot waves. Oh. And she survived. <laughs> It's just imagine, like, if you get seasick on a 90-foot wave, and you're just... That sounds terrifying. Um, <laughs> I have a deep respect for the ocean. Bob, if you had to jump into a part of history, personally, like, if you go back, mm. what's the spot that you would say, like, this would be, I want to be in the mix. I want to be in this. You want to be in the room where it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or yes! the battle. I'd be like, you know, would, yeah, would you uh, want to be in something? Know, I, I think... If if anything, Hopefully like, on the now side. that I'm doing more like the family history, I really want to be at Okinawa where my grandfather was to know what he did. Yeah, you know, he didn't talk much about it after he passed. It was I found a bunch of different aspects about where he was with his ship. So he was at the Battle of Okinawa, and uh, this is a huge battle for the Marine Corps, huge battle in the Pacific, and he was uh, on an LSM, which is one of the ships that opened up to drop the Marines on him. And as I was doing the digging and learning more about it, I found out his battle station position was at a machine gun, but he was a cook. So just to be able to see like what it was he did, what it was he saw, because I can see the positions on a battle map, right? But I don't know what he saw. Mm. He never talked about it. So like, I, if I could find a way to drop into that spot 
and just ride along with him in the South Pacific for the, those years of the war. Uh, you know, that would be where I want to go. My grandfather was a chef in the hmm. in the military, and I'm like. Leonardo or Tuso, definitely a great Yeah, they got to make that. A lot of French cuisine, You right? need to be cooking in there. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, I'm going to break it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to our boxo question. All right, now this is a new segment that, well, not a segment, I guess a we're new just, feature. We're just mixing it up. So because we always learn a lot of, you know, Rowan facts, but like we want to know you as a real person too. I mean, you're a real person. <laughs> what was the best decade to grow up? Well, you know, I have to say I, I was born in 84, so I don't really remember a whole lot of the 80s, but I watch all 80s cartoons. Mm. Transformers, oh, G.I. Yeah, Joe's. Yeah, please. Now, now you can't beat it. Nope. You, mm-hmm. No, you nope. just cannot beat it. Nope. Um, the 90s. like That's all real history, too, right? School, I, I, remember, I remember specifically um, there was two shows that I watched before I went to school. As I was happy to be on. was was... Um, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. I kid you. That not. is a long oh, time. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> and then um, there was a cartoon, James Bond Jr., which was funny because I got into the movies as I got older. But I remember those. I haven't seen them anywhere. There's not anywhere you can build. But and then between that and my sister putting on Saved by the Bell every single mm-hmm. day. Mm. Once that came on, forget it. You know, as that was on every single day. But I don't. I don't say no if there was a decade per se to grow up in, but maybe some of the stuff um, that impacted me, I would say the 80s, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, I Just the other day, I started watching MacGyver on, uh, you know, Loop. Uh, yeah. Yep. And, and so that... The original, right? Now the original. No, 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 no. Richard Dean Anderson. Thank you, you very no, much for no, no, clarifying no, no, no. because there's only one MacGyver. Yeah, no. So like, I was watching MacGyver, uh, Magnum P.I. Yeah. Um, the Great. original Hawaii Five O, I watched that. Yeah, book try to get my wife to watch that because we watched the new one. She goes, "No, I'll keep the new one. You can look at the old." Oh, one. she doesn't like the old one. No, she doesn't. That's okay. No, there's no Alex O'Loughlin in that one for oh, her. Okay. You know what I mean? I know. I know. Do you know? So it was Top Gun '80s or '90s? Yeah, that's '80s. So my niece and nephew, they call me Gus. It's like because they have two Aunt Jesses, so we just kind of differentiated that I would be Gus. It was just like a fun nickname. Well, my brother-in-law all of these years has been calling me Goose, which I thought was just like a funny take on Gus. Like I thought he was just kind of like, you know, making fun of the fact that I had the nickname Gus. Well, my sister the other day was like, no, he's calling you Goose from Top Gun because you're like his like main person. And I was like, "What?" what? I was like, all of these years, she's like, you've never seen Top Gun? I'm like... No, okay, so that I. Needs to be fixed. I well, that's what. <laughs> so the other day I watched. Well, I must be on like a Tom Cruise thing, but I watched Cocktail because I've never seen that before. I've never seen that either, actually. It's yeah. really, it's actually pretty good. And then, um, yeah, I need to like go back to the '80s and like watch some of those key movies that I missed because when Maverick was it Maverick that came out? The new was, one. Yeah, yeah everybody was so excited, and I was like, I never seen Top Gun. <laughs> like, I've seen that a million times. I love that one. That's uh, why I'm watching movies. But I would have gone to the '70s. Yeah. I, I mean, I was, the 70s, that music back then was just like the to be there. With would like, you be like with belt bottoms and, and like disco? Yeah. Oh, pl- uh, well, I don't know about disco but I wouldn't be like with Hendrix, Jerry Garcia, like you know, all the deadheads and stuff like that. I want to be out there at that time. Okay, mm-hmm. so like that different that, genre. Yeah, that genre. More like classic rock. Than yeah, yeah. I want to go to the concerts, disco. try to survive most of them because <laughs> there's probably just some questionable activities going on back then, but that's where I would be, I think. Yeah, I think the music really for us because we're both we were both you know friends through through the station. Yeah. I think music probably dictates where we would go decade wise. Because I always say to my husband, they just don't make music like they used to. He's like, why are you an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like I don't know. What's he listen just, to? Post Malone? No, but he listen. He'll listen to like more current music and more current artists. Although he is like a big jimmy buffett guy so he was devastated, oh, devastated about, sure. about that but um he listens to more current stuff but i'm like i like the old stuff like i just want to the 60s the 60s music that's that's my jam so we're all we got 80s 70s and 60s yeah we're all in a different be- mix between all of us um when you're in the present moment <laughs> and not in the history what are you doing for fun outside of the Battleship New Jersey and ice skating and all this other well, stuff? Well, pretty much just hanging with my family. My right. daughter's involved in ice skating, which is like three, four days a week. Okay. Um, you know, and she, the, our church youth group will be starting up, so she'll be going to that. And um, my wife's birthday is this weekend, so we're going to do something for her. And um, 
pretty much just hang with family and, and do that. Uh, we're actually going to bring my daughter to her first planetarium show <gasps> at Elman Planetarium this Sunday. What is she going to see? It's going to be the family one that's about a half hour. Okay. So we know what's here. But I, I know that when I was here as an undergrad, I used to do Laser Floyd. Uh, they, they used do to do Laser Pink Taylor Floyd. Swift. Right. Is she a Swifty? And now they have, um, oh, Taylor Swift, no. I am old school country. No. <laughs> oh, uh, oh my goodness. Well, she's not country anymore. She admits that. Uh, it's, she's whatever she is, she is. But um, <laughs> well, but, um, but I know Taylor that Swift they have um, they now have Metallica at the Planet yeah. Yeah. as well. And, and Elton so John cool. recently I saw. Yeah, Elton yeah. John. Yeah. So um, we're going to do the planetarium, see how that goes out, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy it. That's a really neat show. They do some good things there. Yeah, they do awesome things mm -hmm. right there. We're actually trying to see if we can partner with them to do just like alumni audience only for some of these big shows that are drawing a big crowd. Mm -hmm. I just was at an event with them this morning, and they were saying not to go back to Taylor Swift because it seems like a sore yeah, subject. You, you might have hit a nerve there, Jess. All, all of a sudden, <laughs> Bob woke just, up. You know what? I, I think it is. It's just like when she got into country music they're mm -hmm. like she's gonna save country music and she just ran away from yeah she's like bye I got know? pop I got I didn't even know she pop. was country I thought she was pop well, she, she, she literally hit the country, radio for like the country and George Strait was like okay she might be alright and then she just ran the opposite directions what is the challenges in teaching well, history at, at this point I think it's that's part of it okay. the other part of it's Google Okay. Uh, Sam Weinberg who teaches at uh, Stanford he's an education professor out there he wrote a book why history if I can Google it? Mm. Why study history if I can Google it? And you know, it's a valid question because a lot of the students ask that. But the problem is, do you want to sit down there and Google every single thing that comes across to try and figure out where it is? Or can you make an educated guess of where it came from and then make sense to yourself? And that's what you really have to do. Because you could go to, just say, one of the town hall meetings for the presidential election next year. Go to a town hall meeting. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it says here on Google from this point, you know, they're like, just ask the question. Yeah. You know, they, that's their point of view is the Internet. Their life is the Internet. It's not necessarily their fault. They grew up with this stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, like a lot of the kids, uh, when I was at the school, they're talking about using QR codes. And I'm like, what's a QR code? I had no <laughs> idea what it was. They're like but this they're, guy. They're out of the womb and they're yeah. doing QR codes. I yeah. don't know what they are. Yeah. And so that was one of the difficult aspects of it, not just is the fact that they're not interested in looking at the past, but you have to find a way to get it on a screen. Mm. And it's, it's sad to say, but like, if like you don't have it on a screen or the ability to put it on a screen, some people are just like, I can't find it. Yeah. Like giving out paper syllabi. Mm. Like if you give out a paper syllabi, but you don't have it on Canvas, where is it? It's in the syllabus. No, it's not on Canvas. And so you have to do that. And unfortunately, it's just a cultural thing now, the way the internet is. Everybody does that. What advice do you have for history students? Don't <laughs> knock it till you try it sort of thing, I guess. You look at it as a story. You know, Don't sit there and go, uh, I have to read. You know, Look at it as a story because you know what? That story has some sort of impact on how your family got here, how you got here, you know, or, or, or why your family came over. What was the reasons your family left the old country, quote unquote, right? Why did they come here? It all has an impact on you one way or another. Jess and I work with obviously a lot of alumni in our capacities, but I'm always interested to see where the history majors land. Because everybody I think assumes they become teachers, right? Mm -hmm. But they branch off into so many different like industries they become lawyers you know they become different different spaces so i think it's a really unique space to be in from mm. from from that history's perspective now bob i, I want to say something here i'd like <laughs> to think that we were your first podcast to be on but apparently you're a bigger deal <laughs> and you you've been you've been out you've been cheating on us well no i guess no, 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 i guess if it happened before us it doesn't count cheat. all right whatever well you've been you've been elsewhere now so so talk to us about the the other mistresses that you've been with <laughs> well uh the first one uh, was the rogue historian by keith harris uh keith is a phd who teaches at a private school in los angeles and he always brings his class out to Gettysburg once a year for a big class. But he's very much into utilizing the Internet and so forth. So the Rogue Historian podcast was one that he invited me on because of a presentation I did at Virginia Tech on Confederate historiography. And that was the first podcast I was ever on. The second podcast was called uh, Unbeatable Army, 
with Jeff Struker. Now, for those of you who don't know who Jeff Struker is, he survived uh, the Battle of Mogadishu, which is Black Hawk Down. Uh, and so he is now, after he was being a ranger, he became a chaplain in the army after Mogadishu, and then he retired. Now he's a pastor down in Georgia. So it was mostly a uh, religious-based podcast. And it was interesting getting to talk to him to see his perspective on life and everything after being through the events of that film. Mm. Uh, and most recently on his podcast, he brought in one of the uh, other gentlemen, Matt Eversham, who was a ranger at uh, Black Hawk Down. I think Josh Hartnett played his part, now that I'm thinking about it, but I'm not sure. Now, if a Rowan student is interested in taking your course, what are you what are you teaching this well, semester? Well, right now I'm teaching a um, survey course, U.S. History to 1865, and I also teach another survey, Cultural Geography, over in the Geography Department. We'll see as it comes availability. You know, sometimes semesters for adjuncts, do you have a class? You don't have a class, whatever. But you know, if you see my name, or if you see the magical staff, everybody had staff back in the day. Somebody yes. had a staff teacher. Yep. And you know, that person just massively metamorphosized into somebody else. <laughs> um, but you know, you never know. <laughs> you always can take a, uh, always take a shot at it. Yeah, we had the printed books back in the day. We'd yeah. for class. Yeah, yeah, you go through the books and yeah. you go uh, lo- on the phone. Because yep. you try to do it on a computer, it didn't work, so you go in on a touchstone phone. Yep. Put the CRNs that in. My, see, that wasn't in, my yeah. experience. That's crazy. Well, yeah, mine was. You put in. You'd enter on the this, internet. You'd enter this nine to twelve digit code to enter yeah. for class. The, on the phone. On the phone. Okay. The obviously the the system would repeat it back to you individual number, and then only to have you like hang on for a second, and they would say the class is closed. Is closed. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd have to re-enter a different number yeah. and just try to get what you can. It was like dialing yeah. for dollars. It was crazy. Yeah. Now my father did uh, registrations here back in the seventies. Okay. Used to get like a um, a sheet, almost like a triplicate yep and you'd write down all the classes you want and you take it to the registrar and they'd be like closed closing you have to do it again you oh, know man. so it's a little bit thank different go- see thank what, goodness for technology yeah, yeah. 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 Well, my, my dad was here savage was the library yeah you know so and so it was a lot different uh then in terms of the buildings and so forth but what's interesting to me now is the student health center was our bookstore yes, you remember yes, that yes, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. yes. and it's so, the bookstore for me too so there's like all these different changes. But the one thing, one ironic thing, I said, right out here, there's a tree. And that tree, my dad, when he graduated, got a picture with my mom. And when I graduated, I got a picture with my mom and dad. Oh. So we'd have, it's the same tree. And we have no idea why that's still there, but we keep it still, hope it's still there. Because my it, where, daughter goes, so it'll be the third generation. There we go. So we'll Love think. it. Legacy family in the making. Yeah. Where is this tree so we can make sure that it doesn't uh, get so knocked down? So if you go right out uh, right out here in the parking lot, mm-hmm. it's the second um, row. And it's by, do you see where the, the cross is? There's a bench right there. Yeah. It's right next to that bench. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. Look at oh. the little landmarks on campus. That's great. Well, hey, Bob, thanks for being on the show today. It's been great, man. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Thank you. Rob, do tell me about your most significant history memory. Like as from a class or like a history thing? I know Washington crossed the Delaware. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> me? Wait, was it the Delaware? Or was it the school? Oh, no, you no, are it not asking no, the I'm right not. person. <laughs> Absolutely not. Asking yeah, I'm the right not person. a history person either. Actually, when my when my growing up, my dad would put on the history stuff, and it just wasn't. It just didn't ring true for me. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I feel like you strike me as a person that would be like really interested in history. Yeah, well, to the point that we made, it's like it. it it's more. I appreciate it more now than I did. Then. Back then, because it was like, all right, I want to play video games. I want to do other things. And even as I got in my younger years, I was doing other things besides history. So, Well, history is so important, and we're grateful for professors and alums like Bob out there teaching it to our, you know, I don't like I'm saying young folk, like I'm 100 years old, <laughs> our current <laughs> students studying history because – as as we know, history is an important part of what makes us who we are. And I like this new introduction of asking guests very random questions yeah. because it's uh, not only fun facts, but a good way to loosen folks up and get to really know them. So I'm in, I'm really excited about adding that little content to our show moving forward. So, so grateful for Bob being here today and we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to Beyond the Brown and Gold on Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM. You can find more episodes on your favorite podcasting platforms by searching for Beyond the Brown and Gold or Rowan Radio On Demand.